All right, hi, we're back on. We were out of service for a little while, but we're back on. We had some inclement weather, so we were kind of stuck in Lowell, Idaho. Found ourselves in this really cute motel that we'll add pictures later. It was called the Wilderness Inn Motel and Cafe. Um, very nice group of people. We spent two nights there just kind of drying out and getting recharged to head back out. So now we've headed northwest on 12 out of Lowell, heading towards ultimately Missoula, Montana. Um, but we're just probably a few miles outside of Powell, Idaho, um, in this great little campground. It's in the Clearwater National Forest. So we've left Nez Perce and we're now in the Clearwater, just along, skirting the edge of the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness. And the campground I will have to add later because I think it's called the Calgary or Campbell campground along the river. This is the Loxe River. Um, but I'll tune in later or we'll add a little blip about what the actual name of this campground is. But Tom now is going to go over the setup of the rig, um, baby girl as he calls her, because um, we've had some requests from several friends and family and subscribers of what our overlander really involves. So I'm going to take over the camera and the pro is going to talk about the rig. Yeah, and I'm not really a pro. You know as to who I let do the intro with uh, all the information that came forth and that's great because she's here to help me with this. And We have had some of that uh, request for us to kind of let you know what we did on our build. And we'll go go through that right now. So, first and foremost, you know we got the 219 Jeep Wrangler JL, and a lot of the stuff that in it I did myself, kind of put it together. Uh, it's kind of been a labor of love throughout the last couple of years, uh, dealing with. I think it was a little bit of therapy for me actually to help put that together. So what we got here is I put in a galley in the back. We'll start in the back and work our way around the front, but. I uh, purchased this at Overland East. It's a combination with the slide, with the Dometic fridge that we had before, and then it goes on the slide. Also have a uh, Cook Partner stove made in the USA. This thing right here is quality. Now, some of the stuff I talk about, guys, it's some of the stuff's kind of spendy, but I look at buying good quality stuff that's going to last for a long time. And this thing right here, as you can see, I mean, it is tank tough, it's soldered aluminum, stainless steel. Uh, it works fantastic. So a little spendy, but well worth the money. You know, we've got Coleman's at home and everything else. But with that comes, uh, I've got a five pound propane tank here. Uh, Amy, nice enough, this was my Christmas present with the MBX Trail Gear. Give them a shout out to, to my friends out of Canada. That uh, So it just kind of covers the five gallon tank, LP tank, kind of keeps it convenient there. You just got pockets and things you can keep other uh, accessories on. So we got that. This is kind of our galley for cooking. The right side, I built that, uh, I built the drawers and uh, it's more of my utility drawer, uh, cook drawer, bottom is food drawer. I have uh, shore power, so I carry this. This is the, for the cook partner, the gas hose. Well, I put that together. I actually built this one, built the drawer, built the frame, added a top frame to it to where I can carry other, other items. We've got a uh, Ootsie, an Otzi, little small grill which is cool and you're going to see some of these things if you're interested in overlanding that we can use and the thing about it is full disclaimer uh, all this stuff was purchased by us so we don't have anybody giving us a deal or helping us out or anything it's total purchased by us but for me to tell you about it i think is beneficial because then that way you know that it works if you're thinking about some of these items uh, i have a grill up here for our stove and in that we have our porta pot, which is really, really, really convenient. If you're going to get one, I highly recommend this. I don't recommend, uh, I haven't used it or, or seen it, but from researching the Thunderbox, I think I would kind of go with this because it's more compact, uh, sanitary, really good. It folds out three legs. Uh, 
really, really good for, for what we need it for. And it, it works really well. Uh, these plastic bags, and you can see if you go on uh, YouTube, we're not gonna demonstrate, but you can see how these works and it's totally self-contained. So once you do your business, it has a powder in it that, that uh, forms a solid for the liquids and stuff, but this is, this is well worth it. Uh, again, and we have uh, other things in there for accessories, more like camp stuff for, for those of you who can't. On the back side, we've got an ARB awning. This is the six foot by eight foot awning that comes extra. Uh, I chose this instead of the uh, Batwing 270 because one person can put these up easily. Uh, the bat wing is kind of tough. We have the bat wing on our camper, our square back camper. We have that, but here, this just gives us some extra coverage, some help out of the sun or rain on the galley when we're working with the galley. Uh, as we go around the side of the uh, our rig, uh, of course, we've got the Nemo shower. It's a solar shower. You fill it up. It's, uh, you uh, pump the pump and it builds up the air pressure and it works really well for just kind of a camp shower. Uh, heats up pretty good. We have our, uh, some things that are essential, I think, that uh, sit on the table that are essential that you need if you're gonna be out boondocking or if you're gonna be dispersed camping is a jackery. Uh, this one is the 500, which at the time they, it came out, it was the, top dog here now they have a thousand and a fifteen hundred also have a panel solar panel in the back that plugs into this that you can charge it from your vehicle and or solar I highly recommend some not saying products or products but from what I we have purchased I can say these work these work really well uh, also we have a charger in case the battery goes down, we do have a dual Genesis dual battery setup. But in case you need to jump start, we've also got a jump start uh, battery pack. It's real compact, fits real well in the in the vehicle, so that's good. Mr. Heater down at the bottom came, <laughs> came in real handy when I was uh, in Washington State. It got a little chilly, so I preheat the tent and felt comfortable using that. You can see the uh, ready light we've got the ready light and we've got the go treads it's kind of like a max track but it's compact square box packs easier uh, than the uh, max tracks i think fortunately you can see they're almost brand new haven't you had to use those yet so that's that's fantastic uh, we have the free spirit chairs we have two of those that work really well uh, real quick i can show you how these work, uh, just unbelievably quick. You fold up, you fold it down, and that's it. I mean, it comes that small. Also has a, we have a case for it that carries it. So chair-wise, front runner, I'm sorry, that's, that's a free spirit, front runners. So those are, those are good uh, to have. We've got two of those. Uh, as you can see, we have a drone, and this is probably one of the most important things you'll have right here. Uh, we've got it, we've got a camera. There's one thing about shooting pictures with the cell phone, but when you can use, just something about having a camera in your hand, which is really, really cool. We have the tar table. That's been real convenient for us. That's worked out really well, not only in camping, but we go to different events. I'll put a plug out for the Edwardsburg Sports Complex. Uh, we go there and do things with them and watch activities and we can set this out basically and just have it like a picnic right there. You have the roto packs uh, with the mount. I've got the mount for the roto packs on the outside. This is four gallons of fuel. And this uh, this right here is kind of something that just gives you a little bit of security. You know when you're uh, we've I filled these these are full and I just carry them with me when we're out and about because you never know when you're gonna need fuel. Or the other thing is you come upon somebody else that may need fuel, that's, that's really good. Uh, we can look inside. 
And what I've come up with, and we'll show a little bit better on the other side, is the goose gear. And I did the 60-40 seat, rear seat delete, and I'm really debating on taking that other seat out. Uh, on the back side, if you can see, there's uh, put a partition up. So the back side has basically a wall that separates the galley from the inside. On the left side, there's a permanent molly panel. We'll get around to looking at that. And if Amy can look in on the right corner, there is a ARB dual air compressor on the right there. And you can see that air compressor is there for airing up or airing down right here. I put in shore power right here. So all my electrical and everything works from this side. And that's one thing you might think about when you're when you're making your bill. I'm not uh, by no means we're experts at this, but it, it through research and trial and error, I've changed this maybe two or three times and you're gonna do that. You may apply something and you may think, oh, that's gonna work. But once you go out and, you know, theoretically you think it's gonna work, then once you get out in the field and you start doing stuff, you can come up with a better idea. So, and, <laughs> and Amy can attest to this that, you know, I'd build something, fabricate something in the garage and turn around and change it. And I think one thing too, guys, as you're starting your build, you're doing your build, a lot of this stuff, we started about three years ago and it wasn't really expensive back then. I mean, it was expensive, but it wasn't crazy like it is now. And the stuff is expensive. But when it comes to the goose gear stuff and some of those items that these people do, for a living they do it on a computer they do it cnc and this thing just fit right perfect in where it's supposed to go and it's done exactly what it's supposed to do so it might be a little spendy but it's worth the money so we can back out here and we can talk about uh, another we've got the eight foot by ten foot arb uh, awning that we've, we've got on the side this is for us to put all our air, uh, stuff out if we want to camp and when we camp it's going to keep shade it's going to have keep us out of the rain one thing we didn't bring because it takes up a lot of room is we have the uh the uh screen in porch that actually screens in here and it's a uh, eight by ten foot screen in porch that fits on here with a solid bottom and it's arb also so that that's cool if you got it somewhere you're going to spend like and mostly that's for like a weekend where you can set it up and you're going to stay in one certain location. So we got that. We're kind of moving around the side here. These steps are to get up to the top before I can get up to the rooftop tent. So we just put these Smitty built steps on the side. It has that. Uh, I have power, power stop brakes on the front. Yeah, this kind of just works like so. So you can step up on that up to the top. And we've got front and rear we got them on the back door and the front door we've got the rock slider here just original jeep rock slider nothing fancy about that it's kind of the uh, uh original rock sliders that came out that's just basically they're not planning on doing any rock sliding but you know keeps keeps stuff from if you're going to go across something we got the power stop brakes uh the good deer wrangler uh tires the dura tracks and we got dirt track and I've got probably, well, I tell you, I don't know how many miles, probably 20,000 on these maybe. And they're holding up great with the XD wheels. We got that. Uh, kudos to my nephew, Andy, who helped me pick out all this stuff and help make that decision on, on what I would need. In the front, we've got the, we've got the Lexar solar panel. It's a 30 watt solar panel that charges up the dual battery system and that works really well. Real quick, I'll show you how that works. Right here, it's got a trickle charger that trickles the spare battery on the Gen uh, Genesis dual battery system. That works really well because you're going to have to make sure that your vehicle powers up and starts and you've got plenty of juice to run charge your phones charge your batteries on for the cameras all your toys and all your stuff will charge and it maintains that charge uh we've got the uh, rugged ridge snorkel on it a lot of folks think that that snorkel is on there for uh to go through water well i'm not going through water that deep folks basically what it boils down to is i have a four-cylinder 
uh, the, the uh, 2.0 hurricane motor with the turbo. And this just draws cooler air into that under the hood there for that turbo so to kind of dissipate some of the heat and that. On front, we've got a Smitty built 9500 uh, X Pro winch with uh, took away the aluminum or I'm sorry, the metal uh, rope and put in a synthetic line hooked up to a Smitty belt with a clevis in the front. 2KC old time, old school original headlights for that. Um, basically, they're spotters with the KC Juniors up top for, and I ran those into my original fog lights. So these kind of act like my fog, act as my fog lights, okay? Uh, back around, we did talk about the historical stock antenna. We removed the stock antenna for the different antenna. The same thing on this side with the steps on both sides that work to help you get up. Inside we have, inside we have the communication center. Basically, we have Amy's 20 here with her phone cover. And we've got uh, 67 design gear up on the dash that helps for both sides. Uh, my phone, Amy's phone, then I have a iPad mini in the center so we can run Gaia and the maps. And that's another thing that, that you want to research too is what kind of navigation systems are you going to use and how you're going to use it to get where you want to go. Uh, we have an in reach up at the top and that's uh, for a satellite connection that is a, a, op, a way to send text messages or emails to get a hold of folks if you don't have any cell service. And we've used that, oh, I've used it quite a bit now, uh, sending text messages to Amy and back and forth. As a matter of fact, we just sent some stuff out to Caitlin uh, to let her know we were okay. So that I would recommend something like that above and beyond maybe the iPad because it gives you that help. What we have here too is the Garmin Earthmate, which is uh, works off a of satellite, and you Bluetooth that over to your phone or to your iPad. And again, if you don't have cell coverage, it gives you an opportunity to help help with guidance and that. Uh, just purchased the WeBoost Drive 4G X. That's a cell phone booster, and I tell you what, it works great. And you got to keep in mind, though, that it's a cell phone booster. It's not a cell phone, you know, antenna that you got to have at least one bar for it to pick it up. And once it picks it up, then it works really well. Uh, on moving on, we got uh, both CB. I've got the Cobra CB, just that's that has all the operations in the handle or in the mic. I've got GMRS capability here and I've got my license WRNX843 for the GRMS and that works really well for accidents or anything out there that you can get in touch with the uh, semi drivers truck drivers of that also if you're on a group drive or a group ride you can communicate with each other from those radios now there's kind of the also having uh, old time maps is a good thing too because they really helped us out when we got down with, with no cell service so those come recommended back in the back we've got the again showing you the uh, goose gear and underneath the goose gear has the storage areas to which my tools are on the left pouch recovery gear tire repair kits on the right those things fit down in there just fantastic. I got a jack in there, all your tools, things you need in case you're having trouble. Fits down there out of sight. It also allows you with that flat surface to stack stuff in there, store stuff neatly and in, and in there. Again, like I showed you earlier, the uh, molly board in the back, first aid kit, survival kit, molly pouches with other items and things that you'll need uh, up here i have uh, my silky saw and an axe over on the right i have a shovel just a small shovel if you need that for campfires or for for to dig out or what have you also uh, on both doors in the back 
I've got thin skins on here. And this just clips over the your your stock door, but it's made so that when you're moving stuff in and out, you're not gonna bang up your, your side of your door with that. So that's something that helps out. Again, roto packs on this side. These are my water packs, the four gallons of fresh water, which you never, you know, you don't wanna run out of water out here. So four gallons of fresh water. Now moving up top, I've got my Rhino wrap up top that my tent sits on, the Free Spirit Recreation Odyssey Series tent. It fits on that and it fits up there just really well. It's a full size mattress that folds out. I can have that thing up in five minutes or tore down in five minutes and it works really well. So towards the back I put uh, this is where my plug-in is for my shore power that goes to the to the Jeep. I just if I have shore power, I can come in and, 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 and plug in and have shore power that goes to that unit that I showed you on the side where my all my electricity stuff's in. The trash roo for my trash and basically whatever stuff you want to hang in there works really well. Now the antenna up top goes to the Wii boost, the cell booster, so that's that's part of that system. We've really spent a lot of time uh, a lot of time and quite a bit of money on this project, but it's something that we've done in order to help us with what we want to do. And this to me is a dream come true because I have came out here before and I've always seen people camping alongside the highway. And I thought, you know what, this is what I want to do. And for me to share this with Amy is special. So I hope that uh, some of the stuff I showed you went through kind of quickly, but it just gives you an idea of what you can use and what you might need in order to start out. And again, understand this, please. You don't have to have all this stuff to start out. You really don't. Uh, to me, it was a hobby. It is a hobby. It's a dream of mine. And I kind of want to use this to move forward with things. We also have a square back camper that later on we'll probably put some YouTube videos of us with uh, Journey, our camper, and kind of show that, but this is it. And uh, you can get out, get off the couch, get out and do it. Uh, the only thing I can say too about it is, it's just one of those things that you can see and see from some of the photos is absolutely beautiful. So thank you guys for, for watching. I hope this helps you out. If not, give me some stuff in the comments and we'll try to come up with more in-depth answers for you, all right? Thank you so much, and as again, like I say, we'll talk to you later.